You manipulated us all. You're going to pay. What is at stake here far outweighs our personal interests. Our personal I'm... interests? You betrayed me. Emily, no! I gotta try this out. What an idiot. He still doesn't get it. Oh shit. She's not happy with me. What do you mean you betrayed me? But wait. How has Sarah betrayed you? I don't believe it. You still don't get it. I'm not Emily, stupid! You went as far as killing your own sister? You're the one who pointed her out. You only have yourself to blame. Oh, oh what? God. Surprise, Sarah! You can't just get rid of me like that, you old hag. Do you realize what you did? Emily loved you. Emily loved you, Emma. You endured everything together. You were never alone. It's... You have no idea what I had to endure. But it must have been the same for Emily. You both went through so much. She always saved the worst situations for me. How many times have I had to climb into bed with some man I'd never even seen before because Emily had seduced him during the day? Emma, it's obvious you suffered a great deal because of the path your lives took. But don't try convincing yourself that your sister didn't suffer too. Duchess, I am sorry about what happened. You had a choice! You use people according to your desires without any scruples. Excuse me, but we are in the same line of business. Shut it! And Emily knew it very well. No, Emma, look at me. She would never endanger herself for the sake of the Order. Her sense of duty gave way to her personal interest. In the end, Sir Gregory was the only one who was truly honest with me. He has opened my eyes more in two days than my sister did in a whole lifetime. Sir Gregory? You've got to be joking, right? You're not really going to trust him, are you? Home manipulates people. I, I know that much. Emma, you don't realize. <clears throat> You're just a pawn to Sir Gregory, like the rest of us. He has never lied to me. He took me in, took care of me. Something that no one else has ever done for me. Why did he do it? You didn't have any particular item which he desperately wanted you to give him, for example? No, I... Emma? You are the only one who knows where the Al-Azif is hidden. He's using you. It's that. It's all Mortimer's fault. Mortimer is responsible for his share of all of this, but he's not playing alone. Holm is serving his own interests too. There's been enough deaths. I'm gonna read her mind. No, it, it isn't fair. I haven't done all this for nothing. Home promised me I could be the only Duchess Hillsborough from now on. Lower your arm, Emma. Or I could say that Mortimer's a demon. Mortimer's Mortimer a demon. Mortimer is a demon in the literal sense of the word. He and Sir Gregory have been living amongst us for several centuries now. I know, Louis. What? You knew? Of course. And they can even read our thoughts, would you believe that? But it makes no difference. I serve Gregory. Mortimer can drop dead, he absolutely deserves it. Ah, lower your arm, Emma. Lower your weapon, Emma. No, I've gone too far to stop here. You are trying to manipulate me again, Shit. I can tell. No, why do you say that? That poor Emma is stupid. She would swallow any story you wanted, wouldn't she? No one will ever manipulate me again. She should never have tried to shoot Emma? me. Emma, no. Don't oh, move. damn. Louis, remember in Paris? I trust you, son. Now, Louis. Ah! No, no, damn it. No, why did you do that? Louis. No, no, no. Come on, mother. Hang in there. You're gonna get through this. Do not trust him. I am proud of you, my son. Maggie, no! no! Mother! No! Maggie Smith's dead! Oh, man. 
I stopped Napoleon from getting the lance. I did. I floored Napoleon. I did. I slapped him real good. I arrived at the wharf before Sarah de Rocher was wounded. I did. Was there a way I couldn't do that? I find out about my demon nature. I, uh, but I didn't stop Lady's helper from shooting Sarah de Rocher. I did not find out about Sarah de Rocher's life. Now I'll never be able to find peace. I could have had a discussion with Godoy. Oh yeah, I did walk past his room a few times. Probably should have done that. Yeah. Wow, we did a lot of objectives there again. Oh, and 68 traits unlocked. Very nice. Alright. I have nothing to equip here, so I'm just going to start the quest, I guess. Eh. Uh. Mumsy is Rational dead. And open. I spent my whole life swimming in lies. Emily, what a waste. I feel like I know nothing. That I have to learn everything all over again. I'm a demon. I age more slowly. I can mentally manipulate people. I don't even know if it's a good thing or a curse. It's good. No. No, this is an advantage. I could get used to this pretty quickly, I think. Damn it. What a mess. Come on. Man up, Louis. I'm still the same old me. Demon or not, I'm still in charge of my actions. And this father, I know nothing about. Yes, I've still got a lot to learn. It's enough to drive you crazy. Everything I believed in, nothing holds true anymore. Pull yourself together, man. I need to find some answers. There's no way of being alone for a minute. <coughs> Can a guy get some privacy in this place? Let's answer the door. <clears throat> Sir Gregory? I know you're not human. Good day, Louis. I think it would be good to talk. How are you feeling? I don't know. I understand. I heard that William spoke to you at last about our nature and our family. It's a good thing, but you must be a bit shaken up. That's the least you can say. I bid you welcome among us, Louis. Knowing William, he probably didn't go into any detail about our family, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Why does Mortimer rebel? What's Lord Mortimer's problem? I think he allows himself to be devoured by a need for recognition. Has he always been like that? More or less, but thinking about it, I believe that the birth of our latest sibling greatly accentuated his discomfort. Is he jealous? Do you think he's jealous? I didn't realize you were so good at behavioral analysis. Indeed, William certainly is prone to jealousy. Finding one's place, notably in the eyes of our father, is not easy, and we each do what we can to succeed. But I can't justify this perpetual rebellion against our rules. Is there a family head? Is there a head of the family? You'll see. You'll meet them all, of course. When you are ready, they created us and set out the rules, especially our father. As for our mother, she retired from the political stage. We don't see her much anymore. I think that all these questions simply bore her. Hmm. How many are there in the family? How many of us are there in the family? We are eight brothers and sisters. Are there any other families? No. Let's do this. Why brothers and sisters? What do you mean by brothers and sisters if we can change bodies? You reason with logic. Uh, we have retained the human habit. When we first come into this world, we retain a certain attachment to our first envelope. If we are born as a man, we are brothers. If we are born as a woman, we are sisters. But I must admit, it has absolutely no real importance. They're just bodies. Are there any other families? Well, tell me then. <clears throat> are there any other families like ours? There are officially seven, but we are the oldest and therefore the most powerful. All right, let's see. No more. No questions. I see. 
there is still <clears throat> much to learn. Yes, it's true. You've got some catching up to do, my boy. One thing you must understand regarding any disagreements that might arise between William and myself is his position with regard to mankind. What do you mean? Well, for centuries we've been trying to help and therefore preserve humanity. Monarchies are simple and practical. They enable us to inspire humanity efficiently, and I can't understand why William wants to replace them with democracy. What kind of democracy are we talking about here? It's not all good. I don't really like monarchies either, though. My father is right. But if your intention is not to dominate the human race, why not let them be master of their own destinies? I perfectly understand this type of reaction from you. Less from William. The main thing you're lacking is time. Man is transient. And one of his particularities is that he does not learn from the errors of his peers. He uses up an incredible amount of energy building and destroying whatever he himself has put into place. If we weren't here to help them, guide them, I sincerely believe that humanity would have become extinct by now. We are eternal, Louis. When we plan ahead, we do it for the long term. That's more like de despotism. Yes, I, I understand, but that's more like tyranny, isn't it? Well, it's all a question of your point of view. From man's point of view, I can understand how he would have that impression, if ever he found out. But don't forget your true nature. From the demon's point of view, in other words, ours, letting man do as he thinks fit would equate to letting him race to his own demise. But... What about man's freedom to choose? That is man's worst enemy, Louis. Imagine a creature that dies without reaching the age of adulthood. It remains a child. We have to help him, otherwise he will put himself in danger. It has taken centuries for our family to establish relative peace between demons. Thanks to this policy, we have been able to decide everything by confining the other families to subordinate roles. And now William is obsessed with disrupting everything. Peace between demons? What do you mean? I'm not talking about conflicts within our family. If that was all there was, everything would be fine. But several other families, younger but nonetheless powerful, are trying to upset the balance. At present, we dominate most of the major countries around the globe. But some families are pushing, via less influential countries, to gain ground. Do you understand? As best I can, yes. When the time comes, you must take up a position on the political chessboard. I only hope your father doesn't take you down with him. <sighs> I always have to choose sides. Is he in danger? Uh, are you suggesting he, he might be in danger? Well, Louis. Our father's patience is not limitless. If William ever does go too far, then yes, he will be in danger. I want you to make an informed choice. Now go and see your father, see what he has to say, and then think it over very carefully. That's exactly what I intended to do. Thank you, Uncle. Don't mention it. If I've been Uncle. able to help you in any way, go now. I didn't want to say father to to father, so why would I say uncle to uncle? Uh, I need to find him again. Will be will he be in his office? Oh yeah, in his study. Yeah, this who done it mystery's really gone quite weird, very supernaturally. Oh, let's talk to the priest. Hey, Piaggi. His Holiness awaits my report. Okay. Is that code for? I need to use the bathroom, but it's engaged. Georgie! Let's go talk to Georgie. Big GW! Louis, busy as always, I see. How lucky you are. I must admit I'm trying to kill the boredom myself. That's the least you can say. I get the impression we're all in the same boat. And here I was thinking you might have some juicy gossip. While I'm missing my left hand, did you notice it's been a while since I've seen you? And yourself, anything to tell? Me? No, 
nothing at all. And you? I would <laughs> like to be able to say yes, but it's been dead quiet. The only one with anything to say is Duke Manuel. But with that accent of his, I don't understand a word he says. It's exasperating. Right. I've wasted enough time. I'll keep our conversation to myself, Mr. President. Anyway, I must be going now. See you later, Louis. Thank you, Georgie. Tum -ti -tum -tum -tum. Tum -ti -tum. There we go. Mortimer. Louis, I was sure you would stay. I'm proud of you. You have made the right choice. You must have been disappointed not to have been able to speak to Sarah one last time. Yeah. I would have liked her to tell you herself. Well, I guess I'll never know now. True. Even so, there is one more thing I haven't told you about her. Sarah was my daughter. What? But why didn't you tell me the truth about her? I thought that might be too many truths to absorb at one time. Nothing. I intended to tell you afterwards. You were in a hurry, so I made a decision. You've been able to understand and choose for yourself. How do you feel? Hard to say. Does that mean that she was one too? I am a little overwhelmed. Confused? About everything? I have to admit, it's, it's been a lot to take in in such a short amount of time. What could be more normal? It may have been a bit brutal, but you've just grown up in a very short space of time. From now on, you can influence your own future. I will guide you. We've all the time we need. You're not the first to make me that offer. What do you mean by that? Your brother, Sir Gregory. Gregory. Why am I not even surprised? What did he say? Hmm. He is worried for you. I think he's worried about you. Worried? <laughs> Marvelous. That's just like him. You know, in a family like ours, we all have a role to play. And his is to worry about everyone else. Let me reassure you, there's no reason for him to worry about me. Hmm. And what about your role? And what's your role? In this family. Mine? Oh, I think they probably feel I'm the eternal naysayer, I suppose. I think one mustn't be afraid of change, and that it is healthy to challenge oneself at regular intervals. I don't impose anything on anyone. I'm just following my own path. But where does it lead? Hmm, I, I suppose I should explain. For centuries now, demons have emerged in and around great leaders all over the world. But like true tyrants, they have governed with an iron fist in a studded glove. That's the impression I get. But you see, people's discontent is increasing, and they are too high up to hear it. They take themselves for gods. Sooner or later, the people will turn against us, just as they have in the past. Each time it's happened, many of us have died. We must master the humans, yes, but gently. And the best way of doing that is by allowing them a free choice, Louis. Man, this is quite good. Mm. He wants to give men a free choice. You really are trying to liberate men. Of course, not entirely, no. It is easier to keep control over people who slumber than people who are oppressed. A man with nothing to lose is a dangerous man. Whereas, if you give him a roof, food, and entertainment, he will do whatever you want. The best way of getting them to achieve something is to make them think it was their idea. For that, they have to feel as if they are free. Hang on, what do you mean? <laughs> Look at the United States. From the start, I introduced an idea that will change everything. The idea that everything is possible. Everyone can become someone. Is there anything more beautiful? You mean it's not true? Man can move mountains when he believes it is in his own interest. And what nobler cause is there than his own freedom? Have you any other examples? Do you have any more examples? Of course. Let's speak about slavery. Talk to me about slavery. 
Well, take the slave trade, for example. It's an archaic practice that simply has to stop. Today, black slaves of America work for free and in unbearable conditions. Tomorrow, if you free the blacks and offer them work along with a salary, they will bless you for it. Then, they will be integrated into the system. They will be taxable. Once they are free, they will have to work for a roof, pay taxes, and feed their families. Maybe we could take away the civil rights of prisoners, for example. In this way, we'll keep control of all those who respect the system and benefit from the others as a workforce. The emancipation of women. And what would you propose for women? They must be given the right to work and to vote. Look, at the moment they don't work. They take care of raising children. What a mistake. We have to get them out of the house. Make them work. In this way, not only will they become consumers, but they will also delegate the job of education to the system. We could guide humanity from a young age, Louis, don't you see? Today we are wasting too much time. <laughs> ah, I've read so many things that talk about this kind of kind of secret society of like more than humans. Okay, let's speak of religions. What obscurantism? By harping on this concept of good and evil, guilt and redemption. Look where men are now, locked up in beliefs that should no longer exist. It's time for men to rediscover themselves and to take control of their lives, as they really are, without any moral judgment. And what's progress? Tell me what you think about progress. Progress is essential, Louis. It's the future. What else? Progress must liberate humanity from burdensome chores. That's Progress worked. must replace man, whatever his presence is not obligatory. It creates both the desire and the need. It will liberate women, as soon as the machines are able to do all the chores in the home automatically. It will bring men together by bringing a faster means of locomotion. Look at the cultural revolution that printing brought about. But the most important of all has already been laid. The foundation stone. Freedom of speech. The first amendment of the Constitution. There must be opponents to every project. So, above all, don't develop a one-track approach. Otherwise, man won't have enough room for expression to feel free. If man sees his chains, he will only want to break them. If we give men the feeling that they are free, I am convinced that they will exceed their limits. And it is only from that condition that humanity shall rise up. But do you want to dominate or raise humanity higher? I want it to advance. I want it to progress. Man is our vessel. If he progresses, then so do we. Wouldn't you like to know what we really are? Who do you mean? Demons? Yes, us. Our species. I've been searching for centuries, trying to find a way to explain the reason of our existence. But humanity has not yet evolved enough to make any progress on the subject. I am convinced that the sciences will bring that knowledge someday. So, that's your objective, is it? To understand who we are? It's still manipulation. I understand your goal, but the change you propose is not really a significant one. It is merely more smoke and mirrors. You must understand that we directly depend on men. Consequently, we have to do our utmost to help them progress and to prevent them from killing each other. Why not impose peace? Why not teach them to be autonomous? What proves that men are unable to evolve without our control? Look at history. Every time man tries to act on his own, he creates more problems than solutions. You will understand better after a few centuries. Our family clings to its privileges and to the past, and that's how they are putting us in danger. The time has come for change. Now that you know your true nature, there are still a few things I need to teach you. 
What do you mean exactly? A new skill, and not the least, Louis. It's about taking control of a person. How do you do that? I don't see how I could do that. I shall help you the first time. How is that even possible? How do you do it? It's an anima resonance. How it works is still a bit unclear even to us. Like a wave or a sound? That seems the most likely, yes. In my opinion, demons are capable of tuning their psychic frequency to that of others. That is why, for example, huh. I tend to surround myself with deaf and dumb servants. The servants dressed in black. I infiltrated them. I opened a channel between them and me, and then I deprived them of speech and hearing. This way, no other demon can turn them against me. Holy shit! I mean, it's, it's super cool, but so wrong. Okay, let's not waste any more time. <laughs> I deduce that you're impatient to master what's in store for you. That is good. I thought I'd mix business with pleasure for this first time. What do you mean by that? The conference will come to a close shortly, as you know. Not that I'm fed up with archaic diplomacy, but it's time to ensure the success of this project. To make this happen, I would like Piaget to inform the Pope he has changed signs. I'm going to say nothing. Here is my plan. I would like you to join his eminence in his room. Just play along. We'll see when the time comes. Very well. And then? You're going to have to trust me. What we're going to do is painless for the human you are going to invade. Invade? Yes. You're going to enter his mind and take control. You're going to influence his actions and his psyche. But how? Make him speak, then concentrate. You must focus on him in order to feel his thoughts. Then, while speaking, you must link with him. Once you're done, you will naturally find your way to the source and enter into his thoughts. But what if I fail? Trust in your instincts. You just have to let yourself go. You have the skill. Let your nature come to the fore. You'll see. If you fail, you'll be in for some light banter with his eminence. That's all. There's nothing to be afraid of. Very well. Perfect. Go now. The Cardinal is in his room. You will have to write a letter to the Pope as if Piaggi had written it himself. In this letter, tell the Pope that whatever happens during the conference, he must follow my propositions. But be careful. In order to protect himself from counterfeiters, the Pope had Piaggi's hand tattooed with a symbol to be sure of his identity. You'll see when you're inside him. You'll understand. Once it's written up, just bring it back to me and I'll send it off immediately. All right, I'll take care of it. Holy crap. I'm about to invade somebody's mind. What's that? Oh yeah, that's the shopping list. Piaggi. This is... Piaggi. All right. Ah, we are going well, to go inside Louis, a priest. What brings you back to my chamber? Which is not May usually the way that of happens. Of course, Louis. It's usually Don't the other you way feel right. good? Yes, but if I'm going to pass inside you, I'd better sit myself down first. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. Well, what can I do for you? Right. Now I need to concentrate. I wanted to speak to you, Your Eminence. Speak to him about politics. Distract him a little bit. What exactly is your role? with regard to the Holy Father. I... What? What on earth is he playing at? It's coming. You're a cardinal in Pictori. Why don't you admit it? Impertinent little brat. Louis, I don't find this conversation in very good taste. All right, it's coming. Come on, Giuseppe, let me in. What? I've done it. I've done it, damn it. He was right. This is just crazy. I can't believe it. Look at yourself, Louis. You better not get caught. 
Whoa. I still need to get used to this body. So, let's see about what Mortimer asked me. We're gonna write a letter right. to the Pope. Well, it's time I got started. Dear Pope. Let's see dear what I can Big find P. you to help me write that letter. You must obey this guy who says that he knows the best thing for us. Forgery, so if you don't, take my time with and not make you'll any come mistakes. and put electrodes on your dangly there bits. Two letters from the Pope on the desk. Sincere. I should be able to get a clue or two number by one. how well they correspond to each other. And here are three stamps. All are different. Let's read the letters on the desk. Read the first letter. My dear Giuseppe, as my health does not allow me to honour Sir Holmes' invitation to go to Lord Mortimer's, I should be grateful if you would sit at the conference on my behalf. Uh, have I read this? Naturally, you will give my thanks to your hosts. Consolidate our agreements with Sir Gregory and let him know that his venture regarding Cardinal Bishop Sharamonti is following its course. I have every confidence in you. May God bless and protect you. SS Giovanni Angelo Brasci. P.S. Don't use your personal stamp when writing to me. Instead, use the one with my motto on it. Hey, that's important. Second letter. My dear Giuseppe, I know you're on your way to Lord Mortimer's residence. I hope you have a good trip, even though you are obliged to cross the French countryside at present very agitated. Know that this mission is crucial, my friend. May God bless and protect you. Uh, Giovanni Angelo Brasci. The... What? Is that January 17th? 1793. E-H-H-B... E-H-H-B-C-F. Uh, hello. How's brunch coffee for you? Put down the letters. Okay. Choose the contents of the letter. Right. Well, let's start writing. Lord Mortimer asked me to discredit Sir Gregory and to announce Piaggi's final vote in his favor. As an introduction, Your Holiness, thank you for your trust. Yeah, they're just a couple of brothers being asshats trying to control the destiny of humanity. I could discredit them both. Maybe the Pope is a demon, though. I'm going to discredit them both. It even appears that Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory both have access to obscure, superior forces to help them reach their ends. I think the Papal States, for the sake of their own preservation, ought to condemn this practice of conferences in the future. All right. Choose a stamp for the letter. Look, uh, let's see. I know something about the stamp. In one of the letters, the Pope asked Piaggi to change and to stop using his personal stamp. He yeah. asked him to use the one with the Pope's motto on it. Uh, the Pope's motto. Apparently I know that. And I remember that. Flore in Domo Domini. The Pope's motto. Must be in Latin. Thanks, game. Look at the stamp on the right. Look at the inscription. Justizia, misericordia e umulta. Nah. Boy, I gotta brush up my foreign languages. Uh, we'll go back. Look at the stamp in the middle. Look at the inscription. On it is written, Flore in Domo Domini. There we go. I'm not going to bother translating it because I can't use this one. Oh. Lovely. Write a secret code. There's a kind of code composed of six letters that they always write under the dates of their correspondence. According to Mortimer, it's got something to do with Piaggi's tattoo. I guess I'll have to write one for today's date. Now, ideally, it'd be better to do without it, but I'm going to need to be extremely clever here. 
Today the date is 2401-1793. Hmm. Think about the logic of the code. In the letters from the Pope, there are six letters just below the date, two just below the month, four others below the year. Piaget's tattoo, it must be used to establish a connection between the letter of the concentric circle and the number shown in the middle. Okay, let's think for a bit. Think real hard, guys, real hard. Some figures are the same in both codes, yet, they correspond to different letters. The day is not translated. That must be the key to the code. The day is not translated. Today the date is 2401, 1793. 24, A. Wait a second. Oh, I think I get it. No, I don't. I don't get it. Right, hold on. 31 is I. 1 past that is G. 2 past it. Oh, I get it. I get it now. So 24... Sorry, seven. Well, oh, today's day twenty-four. So twenty-four is A. That's fine. So uh, seventeen is E, right? So it'll be A. Oh no, it's O one yet. O one, so it's A. A to E. A. Today the date is twenty-four o one seventeen ninety-three. A. A. One, so it'll be B. I think. Today the date is 2401-1793. Okay. Alright. Hold on, I'm being an idiot here. B is not even on the on my list. It would be Zero one. Hold on a second. I, I know I can do this. I just need to put it together in my head here. So So the root is A. Zero past that is A. So I know A is correct. One past that is F, not B. Today the date is 2401-1793. F. Today the date is 2401-1793. Oh. I wish I wouldn't say it every time. Okay. The next one is also F. Today the date is 2401-1793. Um, then it is 7. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's C. Today the date is 2401-1793. Nine, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, H. Today the date is 2401-1793. And then three. One, two, three, G. Today is the 2401-1793. That's it. Let me just check though. So I'm going to check the, the previous one. So 31, 12, 17, 82. So 31 is I. 1 past that is G. 2 past that is J. 1 past that is G. 7 past that is H. Yep. 
9 is F, and 2 is J again. Yeah, I've got it. Nailed it, guys. Finish the letter. Your Eminence, all ready to send... What's he doing here? Damn it. That's all I need. Don't worry, he can't hear us. What do you mean, he can't hear us? What's going on here, Piaggi? Tell him you gave Louis a tranquilizer, yeah. Calm down now. Monsieur de Richer came to see me because he was having anxiety attacks and wanted something to help him relax. I'm afraid I've been a little heavy-handed. Yeah. You can say that again. I was hey, about Graham, to doing, man? someone to take care of him. Would you care to go? There he is. And there he stays. <laughs> the perfect opportunity. What do you mean? It's been a while now that I've been hoping for a chance to get rid of him. Can you keep a secret? I'd rather not. But I do like the gossip, of course. Of course, my son. Would you like to tell me under the confidentiality of confession? Ah, don't talk rubbish. I don't trust the little runt because he is Mortimer's son. Would you believe it? How does he know? Dear God, how is that possible? I am flabbergasted. We've wasted enough time. What if he wakes up? If you don't want to get your hands dirty, just turn away and leave everything to me. This is not a decision to be taken lightly. You're defending him now. What are you talking about? Of course not. He's made you change sides, hasn't he? You're going too far. I refuse to get involved. That's against the rules, for heaven's sake. The oh. rules, I did not the go consequences out. of the conference could well destabilize the world order. It's our duty to shelve Mortimer's project. And to accomplish that, anything goes. Monsieur Von Von, I always act in the best interest of all. I assure you. Everyone's entitled to an opinion. You must have lost your mind to want to take such an extreme course of action. No one's asking you to help me do it. You run the risk of getting the conference cancelled. You can't attack him without running the risk of jeopardizing the conference. Even though Sir Gregory has the edge? No. Gregory will never forgive you. Very well, Piaggi, you win. I refuse that to was easy. the first thing that comes into your head. I don't know what the two of you are up to, but I'll find out sooner or later. Right. Time for me to get back into my body. Wow, I'm sitting there with my eyes open as well. Right. Don't just stand there, Louis. Mortimer's waiting for you in the red salon. 